In this video, as you guessed it, we're going to review the new EcoFlow Delta II. Now, I will tell you up front, I'm only going to do a few more solar generator reviews this year. Uh, these are products I actually enjoy, but after that, I think I'm going to take a break on the channel for a while. I've got three more lined up. I'm going to spread out over the next three months. Now, I will tell you up front, I do like EcoFlow's products. So I was willing to work with them on this video because I think they have, this one is a pretty unique offering in several different ways. There's things that I do like about it, and there are some things that you need to be aware of before you purchase this. And we'll go over all these points. We'll break down all the specs and so on. So here's what we're going to cover in the video. We're going to go over the primary specs, and we're going to look at the features of this model. I'm going to tell you about all the things that you need to be aware of. We're going to run through various tasks. We'll check the DC and AC efficiency. We're going to look at pure sine wave capability. And we're going to look at the solar charging capabilities, all the things you want to know before you buy something like this. And then I'll show you how it stacks up against comp uh, competition. I've got a spreadsheet that I've built and we'll go over that. This is something I've introduced several times on the channel. It's very exhaustive and it shows you all the different options. So you can see how this stacks up. Then we'll answer the question, is this the right fit for the preparedness community? The name of my channel is City Prepping. I focus on preparedness on this channel. So I try to introduce products I think will be a good fit. I'll disclose how I get compensated for these videos. And then I'll give my final thoughts at the very end on you know, whether I think this is a good fit for the community and just all the other things after we tie it all together. So let's jump into the first one, features and specs. Now, before I run through all the features and specs, I would recommend, and I'll post a link up in the cards above, to a video that I just released last uh, weekend. It was a video where it goes through every technical aspect you need to know about watts and you know power capacity and all these different things. And if you're not clear on these kind of things as we're about to run through them, highly, highly recommend you watch that video. I put a lot of thought into it, and I think it went over really well with the community. So let's jump into the primary points. Let's start off with the battery uh, chemistry. It's lithium iron phosphate. And if you're not sure what that means, it's a type of battery chemistry that is known for longer charts, or rather a longer life. You can get a lot of cycles out of it, around about 3,000 to 3,500 cycles, whereas your typical lithium battery maybe gets around five to 800, maybe 1,000 tops. So technically, if you use this for, you know, every day, you could run it from top to bottom for about 8.2 years. And think of it kind of like a cell phone. It, when you first get your cell phone, the battery life is long. After you use it over time, it starts dying. It's kind of like that. But you can still get 80% after, uh, what did I say, 3,000 cycles. Now, after that period, it doesn't just become a paperweight. It's not just uh, dead at that point. It's just you're only going to get 80% of the capacity that you originally got. Ori you know, Again, think about your cell phone after a year or two. It just doesn't hold as much power. Think about it in those same terms. One of the other features is a five-year warranty. As far as I know, this is one of the best in the industry. There's a few other that come close, but five years, I want to say, is probably one of the longest that I've seen out there. Uh, this particular unit is expandable. You can add a kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, or you can add a two kilowatt Delta Max battery. Now, as far as the plugins go, uh, on the front, you've got USB plugins. Now, these are your standard options. Uh, again, you can look at the 100 watts, some of the old dinosaur type of plugins. On the back, you've got solar and AC input along with the fuse if you trip it out. Below that, you have your AC plugins, which can support up to 1800 watts of output, like I mentioned a moment ago. Below that, you have your 12 volt plugins, that, or rather output, for your 8 millimeter and then your standard cigarette adapter. And of course, this is your output. On both sides, you have your exhaust fans. As this heats up and you use it or you're charging it, it will warm up. And if you've ever owned an EcoFlow product, these are all pretty standard interfaces on the front and back. As far as the charging goes, the AC charging, what it does is it will charge up to 1200 watts for the first 80%. That's pretty powerful for something this size. You can pull 1200 watts in those first 80% while you're charging this. All right, let's talk about solar charging. This particular unit can handle 500 watts, and I'll walk you through the solar charging setup momentarily that I experimented with. We'll go into a little more detail. Now, as far as remote capabilities, you can connect this with an app over the internet, and you can control it from anywhere, as long as you have an internet connection that this is obviously tied into. And for example, if you have this set up in a remote cabin, this is very useful. You can turn off the AC and the DC. You can monitor the battery life. You essentially have full control over this, over the internet to see what's going on with it. And one of the things I like about the EcoFlow products and why I like reviewing them is because they really have a whole ecosystem built. You can connect this one specifically to their smart generator. And I don't have one. I've seen a lot of videos on it, but 
Uh, essentially, they'll talk to each other. So if this drops down to a certain percentage, you'll tell the generator, hey, kick on and charge me up. And then when it hits a certain amount that it fills up to, it says, okay, we're done. So we'll turn the generator off. I think that's a pretty nifty little setup. Now, it does have X boost, and this is good for heating devices, such as, uh, you know, like a heat gun, a uh, induction plate, if you're heating up food, uh, you know, just a heater to warm up the room, but you don't want to use this on sensitive devices. What it does is it boosts the wattage, but not the voltage. Again, if you know anything about sensitive devices, that's not good. But for devices that are more forgiving, you can pull more power out of this. All right, one of the last features is EPS. And EPS is their equivalent of UPS. If you're familiar with UPS uninterrupted power source, if you've ever hooked up a small battery, for example, next to your computer, you can buy these at Best Buy. So if the power goes off, you can still charge your device or rather keep it powering, they won't turn off. And then you'll have time to power down. Now. This has EPS, it's 30 milliseconds switch over time, whereas a UPS is zero milliseconds. So for sensitive devices, computers, workstations, I wouldn't recommend this, but for more forgiving devices, uh, I well, my monitor, some other simple electronics, it'll be fine if you just wanna keep them continuously powered. All right, so let's jump into the section about test. As far as AC efficiency, what I do when I test these devices, is I put a 75% load on the device and then I run it until it drains out the battery. Now, this is one of my big, the only thing I don't like about this unit is that it came to a 74% efficiency on the inverter. And that's one of the lowest I've seen testing these units. And again, how did I get this number? Well, what I did is I plugged in a device called a kilowatt. It's just a simple little mirror that you can buy at Home Depot and it will tell you how much power you're pulling out. What I did is I found out that I got, I think, 760 watts, and it's a 1024 watt hour battery. So what I did is I divided that amount that I got out, 760, by 1024, and that gives us 74%. A lot of the devices I test, the efficiency is a lot higher. This is definitely on the low end, and we'll talk about this momentarily in the comparison section when we look at it other devices that are, again, similar to this one in the market. Now, as far as DC efficiency, I ran the same test where I plug in a meter to it, it just pulls power, and it, at the end, tells you how much it got out. And what we found was it pulled out 760 watts. And again, from an efficiency perspective, 74%, that's kind of low on these devices. Most of the look at are starting low 80%. And again, uh, we'll look at all these numbers here in a minute when we go over the spreadsheet. Now, when we charge from 0%, what I did is I ran this battery all the way down, and then I charged it up. And as we talked about a second ago, the first 80%, when you charge it up with an AC plug-in, you know, plugging into your wall socket, it took about 52 minutes from zero to 80%, and it was charging at 1200 watts, which is pretty impressive. But the last 20%, that took a while. It pulled only 320 watts during that time. And again, remember the stadium effect that I talked about earlier, it will run really quick at the beginning and then slows down at the end. And it took about an hour and a half in all to fill it up from, and I'm using the term fill it up by charging it up, I mean, from 0% all the way to 100. But the first 80% was done within those first, I believe, 50 minutes. All right, let's look at the pure sine wave test. What I did is I tested at 0, 50, 75, and 100% load. At 0%, it did get a pure sine wave. But when we got into 50, 75, and 100, and by those numbers, what I mean is I was putting a device on the AC pulling a certain amount of power at 0, 50, 75, and 100. And what I did is I tapped into the unit with the meter and I was looking to see how is this behaving when I'm putting it under load, these different percentages. So again, at zero, I got a pure sine wave at the 50, 75, and 100. Uh, it wasn't quite a pure sine wave. You could begin to see some degradation on the meter, but is it gonna be something that would I would say is just horrible? No, I mean, it's still gonna power most of your devices under heavy load. If you're very, very concerned about very fine-tuned instruments that need precision, this might not be the right fit for you. All right, let's talk about charging with solar. I tried something different. A lot of times I get, you know, I have the EcoFlow panels, but what I decided to do is, hey, let's look at some other options on the market. It works great with the EcoFlow panels, but they're not cheap. They're good, they're foldable, but I ended up getting some rigid monocrystalline panels that you typically see on rooftops. And they're very affordable, typically about $100 for 100 watts. And I hooked up four. Well, actually, I first hooked up three in series, but the voltage was too high, and so this device just wouldn't take it. I dropped it down to two in series, 200 watts. 
and this would charge off that in series. So what I did was I changed the connection from a series to a parallel, and then I was able to hook up four 100 watt panels with no problem whatsoever, and this thing just took off right off charging. Also, if you've seen in the past, I've done videos on my solar blanket, or rather videos on solar blankets, they're a great product. I work with a company out of Canada. They're compact. They're more affordable than smart film, but they're very small. You can compact them up to a pretty small size, very powerful. And they also perform well in the solar panels. And again, I'll post a link up in the cards above if you want to see that breakout video. All right, for this segment of the video, I'm going to hop over to my desktop. We're going to take a look at a spreadsheet that I often reference on the channel. It's a spreadsheet where when I test units, I put their information in here so that you can go back and um, take a look and see how they stack up against each other. And again, I'll post a link to this down below if you want to um, check out the spreadsheet. All right, so we are looking at the EcoFlow Delta II. Now, as you can see, you can sort these column headers here. So if I want to say, hey, sort A to Z. Uh, goal zero came in the most inefficient that I've tested so far on AC and uh, the EcoFlow Delta was a second. As you can see, most of them typically go from 82 all the way up to 91%. We're going to sort the column for uh, DC efficiency. Same thing, the, um, oh well. <laughs> now that I look at this, I've noticed EcoFlow products typically kind of score a little low on the DC efficiency. So we're on this one. So it's kind of uh, pretty much ranks up there with the other EcoFlow products, 74%. Now the cost per watt hour, I have two columns. I have one called stated and one is actual. Stated is if you were just look off their website and say, oh, okay, you have this amount of what hours, how many, you know, what, what is that going to cost me when I add this all up at the end of the day? And let's just sort that. If we were to look at, let me sort this as far as what they state, this one would be EcoFlow. I'm sorry, where are we? Delta uh, two, it would, it would do pretty well at 98 cents. Again, you have other, you can see here how these other ones stack up, but then actual, this column is based on after our efficiency, we ran through the tests or AC in particular, we can begin to see Oh, well, how much am I actually going to get out of this? So on this particular model, we've got, so sorry, here we are. So we're paying actually $1.32, and that's nearly come pretty close to almost twice as the Pecron products. So as you can see, it's, uh, you know, it's a little on the high side as far as what you get. And, you know, again, after you have to factor in your efficiency level, AC efficiency in this particular example. So let's take a quick look at this tab, EcoFlow. I've got a few of their products in here. I put the Delta 2. You can see all this information. I've also got a coupon code if you want to use that to save 8% on checkout. That one is good until October the 16th. But you can see a lot of the information here. Uh, you know, how many solar blankets. Again, I referenced those solar blankets earlier. How many you can plug into this particular uh, unit if you want. It'll tell you this. The Again, it breaks down all this information. Oop, I'll add this, uh, I'll add that information after the video. I'm sorry, I forgot that one. So in a nutshell, you've got all the information here for you to be able to go back and look at. And I tell you, hey, what are the, what is this really suited for? In this particular ca example, car camping, emergencies, maybe a small off-grid cabin. You know, again, you can monitor it over the internet. Good fit for the prepper community. I would say this, it packs a lot of punch for a small device, something that this is this small, this portable, it can, it's pretty capable. My only wish is that it had a slightly larger charge controller to accept more solar, maybe 800 watts because it's at 500 watts. Over my shoulder, I've got the Jackery here in the background over there. I'll do a review on that in about a month. That one has 800 watts that it can accept. So it's something that's in the comparable size, but it can handle 800 watts, which it'd be nice to have, but not a deal breaker. So the thing I like about this is this, if you had a remote cabin and you wanted to set this up, set it up on solar panels, power a few things, and you want to be able to see it, you know, what's going on remotely. If, you know, if everything's working correctly, you need to turn off the device because it's getting, you know, all these things you can do. Well, you can do all that via an app as long as it's connected to the internet. And I think that's amazing. I'm excited to see these products increasingly, uh, and, you know, add these features, which I think could be very useful. And with the coupon that I'll offer, again, I'll post it below. I think the price is pretty solid for what it offers you. EcoFlow, they have a proven track record, and I don't have a problem recommending their products. I've been working with them for years, and they've always got solid offerings. If you're looking to power a refrigerator or a few small devices, if the grid were to go down, again, few devices, very small devices, maybe our cell phone, a tablet, and a refrigerator, I would say something like this is a good fit. 
if you were to combine it with three or 400 watts of solar panels, like the example I showed you, the Renogy, even the 100 ones they have, they're not that expensive, I think you would be set for your typical disaster. Compensation disclosure. I'll tell you up front, I didn't get paid for this video. Uh, I love EcoFlow's products, so I was willing to do this video for them free of charge. And they've been generous with this channel. Last year, there was some equipment our Boy Scout troop needed, and they were very kind enough to donate some pretty expensive stuff that we use on our campouts. Normally, I do charge production costs with channel, or rather with uh, companies to, you know, all my filming, editing, da 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 everything to get it to the channel. But for this one, I decided to skip it. Again, EcoFlow has just been very nice, and I decided to just return the favor. Final thoughts. Overall, I like it. I was just disappointed with the low AC efficiency. My channel is not the only one that's pointed out. I've watched a few other reviews and they've noticed that as well. But with the coupon code and the features that it comes with, in my opinion, it, it makes it more uh, competitive than similar products in the same price range. They're just near, not nearly as feature rich as this one. So there's always give and take on these kind of units. When you get, you know, you get a little feature, you might lose something over here. Um, it, what I'm finding with solar generators is the market is becoming so niche. There's so many of these popping up and they all have their kind of small differences. But all that to say, this is actually probably one of the units that I'll keep. A lot of my giveaway, uh, subscriber giveaways, etc. But I do like the lithium iron phosphate battery setups because they just last longer and there's, they're a lot more capable. Um, also, I do like the five-year warranty, which I think is, again, if you have any issues with it or concerns, you got it covered. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Again, um, I enjoy doing these videos. I'll probably be doing a few more this year and uh, <laughs> I think I'm a little maxed out. But uh, yeah, for this one, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts below. As always, stay safe out there.